Hey students from around the world, it's Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading and I hope you're having a most fantastic Friday. It is Friday, which is always good. January the 23rd, I'm on Real Life Trading Facebook page. We have 354 likes. You guys are rocking it. Thank you. That is so nice of you guys. Feel free to spread the message to get people to like our page. It'd be great. Uh, hop it over here. Uh, these two guys, I love them, always posting good good stuff. Uh, ACHN and SPLK, let's go look at those two. ACHN, looked at this one in the third hour on the trading floor today as well. Uh, Joshua Taylor uh, has positions on this, I think, also, and Lita Roberts had some positions, but making higher highs, higher lows, well, I should say I'm part, sorry, making higher lows, these fib levels are pretty interesting. The 1596 is a nice resistance and 1665 is a nice resistance. If I was in shares personally, I'd probably be doing a 17, 18, or 19 covered call probably sometime in February. Uh, I really like the trend. It does look like it's about to break out. It does look a little bit more bullish than bearish. We do have one, two, three, four, five white candles in a row. So if we do gap up at some point, it'll likely get sold a little bit because all these buyers will lock in a little bit of profit. But overall, some covered calls on this particular pharmaceuticals company uh, could be nice, could be rich maybe. Uh, let's see if there's any premium in a put sale down at about $12. If you want to own shares, there usually is pretty good premium on pharmaceuticals because they are so volatile. Do you guys say volatile or volatile? Which ones do you guys do? I, I think I say volatile. Volatile. It's kind of like Louisville. Louisville, Kentucky. Volatile. <laughs> anyway. ACHN, February 20th. That's the February expiration. And, you know, there's a little bit of premium in $12. I mean, you know, we'd want to get at least 1% of the stock's value. The bid ask is 10 15 You get $0.10 cents out of it. Uh, that doesn't scream phenomenal to me. Screams okay, so I probably would just pass. You know, if we do pull back and bounce, and yeah, sure, maybe get into a bull put spread or put sale, but it does look uh, does look a little bit decent. SPLK, uh, which is always a fun stock. SPLK, I mentioned not too long ago that I wanted to close or an end of day close above fifty seven twenty eight, and we did close above there here and here, and I almost very very close to it today. And kind of a stop in place at 53.41, which we came apparently a few pennies away a few times from actually getting stopped out. So that's good that we haven't gotten stopped out yet. So you can see the stop is really kind of below the long term uh, moving averages. I think it is a good place to kind of keep the stop if you are currently in that trade. If we're looking at just candles here, here are the candles. And uh, you know, there's definitely some type of support building. We have some lower highs, so I think we'll keep the stop where it's at, and uh, maybe even convert that into a protective put, right? So if we do break below there, we can get into a put and then expect SPLK to potentially continue down a little bit, maybe even as far as this gap, and maybe just maybe to 40.49 on SPLK. Apple. Let's gaze into Apple's eyes. Uh, we did break this little bearish trend that's coming on, a very kind of a weak one, but we did break it today. Steven Steckler uh, did very well in this trade today for day trading, Jonathan Higgins as well. And I'm cautious about calling this a double bottom because it is quite a large double bottom. And with earnings approaching, which are gonna be next week, Apple really can do kind of whatever it wants. I mean, if it gaps up, uh, I would imagine it would gap up to at least 119 and then probably get sold because of all the white candles that are coming in. If we get a little bit of a pullback Monday and we gap up, that could be a little bit of a stronger gap. If we gap down to approximately 104, uh, it probably would get bought, right? Buy low, sell high, all that jazz. And if we break 104 on the gap, would probably be kind of bearish actually on Apple. So it's interesting to see a lot of people are in some positions. Kind of my thought if I had shares of Apple, I would be getting into a 120 covered call expiring next week and either a 109, 108, or even a, maybe a 110 protective put. The 120 covered call could either be for all of February expiration, which would expire sometime in this little pink line. And 120 would be a good place to exit Apple because it's at the all time high and you know, there's going to be some selling pressure coming in. So it really will be interesting to see. But earnings right around the corner. Make sure to tune in to the Real Life Stock Review, and I'll be happy to give you guys my insights on Apple once earnings do, uh, do come out. 
So as a review for some of our spreads, uh, SPY, bull pit spread, expired, totally profitable today, going to options heaven, so that's great. Uh, buying the bounce, we did that, and we are happy. So at this point, the intraday trigger was 202.70. If we're still waiting to get in, I think it's not too late. I mean, this is a good inside day candle, a good resting candle. If we do pull back a little bit more and bounce, in my opinion, I think that that would be actually kind of a, a decent play. Um, yeah, sure, we could be forming some very ugly triple top head and shoulders pattern that's very, very plausible. We do have higher lows, we do have lower highs. That's why I kind of have some protective put triggers for the intraday entries that we took. Uh, 201.69, I would start buying some protective puts. And then if we close below 198.42, I'd likely exit any of my long positions and continue to hold on to those puts. The DIA, same thing. Inside day candle, uh, we already got triggered in bullish yesterday. So the protective put entry is at 17439. And our target is approximately 179.80 on the DIA. QQQ, um, this bull put spread expired profitable today. This was one that we set up on Wednesday. And guys, that's an eight cent limit. That's an 8% return in three days. Pretty uh, pretty epic. So uh, it definitely pays to keep an eye on the market and kind of see what it's doing and be watching every day. I do, in fact, like doing that as a job. It's much, much, much better than what I was doing. IWM. So IWM, we have some uh, interesting congestion here. I really did uh, love this bull put spread, uh, 112, 111 for February, 13 cent limit. Won't even look at that spread unless it closes below 114.20 on the hourly. And 114.20 is right about here. So if we don't get below there, I'm not going to you know, put, keep my eyes on this. I mean, I'm not going to look at it unless we do something like that. So we'll probably do something like this. It'll be my imagination until February. Uh, nice 13% return if we do close below there. And even that, truthfully, I mean, we'd have to close below 113 for me to really, really be concerned, which is kind of my line in the sand. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Uh, got an interesting evening star reversal pattern today, but just in time because the bull put spreads, the 125, 124 that Chris Tom did, and the 122, 121 uh, that I did my analysis on did expire worthless today. They went to Options Heaven as well. So that's good. Options Heaven's filling up. Google. Uh, had another bull put spread on Google, 45 for 40 bull put spread, 50 cent limit expiring this Friday. That expired worthless as well. Uh, Amazon, just a lot of spreads, guys, a lot of spreads. Amazon expired, the 282, 280, uh, that expired this week as well. So overall, um, I think we did quite decently uh, today uh, and this week and last week. I did get stopped out for a one hour loss on DreamWorks. Uh, this little mean stock took me for an hour loss today, which is fine mitigated my risk, right? So my entry was a break below the support. I noticed that there wasn't much stopping it if we broke below there. Well, apparently there was and uh, took a loss over there. No big deal, risk was mitigated and I made up for UPS, right? UPS uh, was a nice gap down today and I was more bearish than bullish and I kind of made it a little bit of an ostentatious claim today but I kind of guaranteed that it would make a lower low based on this gap and uh, it really was quite beautiful. I mean, it gapped down here, traded up to this daily resistance, and then kind of rolled over from there. And if you got a chance to play that rollover, I mean, there were some really good profit opportunities on um, UPS. I took some early profits here this morning, uh, got back in, got stopped out for a small loss somewhere over here when I went to Starbucks to get my oatmeal, and then got back in bearish at uh, 103.46. Stop was right here and exit the low of the day. My target didn't quite get reached, so I had to exit. Uh, but overall, you know, good trade on UPS. More bearish than bullish, but at this moment on the daily chart, we are between the long-term moving averages, which is really, really interesting. So I would kind of wait for a close either above or below that because UPS does kind of remind me of Best Buy with that really, really giant gap that it had and then the lower wicks between long-term moving averages and a lot of indecision. So we'll keep an eye on Best Buy and see how it plays out. By the way, if you get a chance, uh, we have 195 followers on TradingView. If you have the opportunity, TradingView is free and I do publish a lot of ideas. So far, I've published 307 ideas. And if you follow us, you get those ideas and that is a, a free feature, which in my opinion is quite worth it, right? Any charts that I post, you guys will automatically get those on real life trading if you do follow us. So make sure to check that out because I do post it probably at least three or four a day, I would imagine, somewhere right around there. Guys, have a great weekend. 
I really don't have any plans this weekend. I might head to a casino and maybe uh, gamble all my money away. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, might play a little bit of poker. I consider myself to be a rounder every now and then. If I need to make 150 bucks, I'll go to a casino and play some poker for an hour, and that'll be about that um, on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Ashley's starting to like poker a little bit more as well. That So... I need to start having some cash games at the house. I like poker. Poker's fun. Regardless, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll be doing something. I'll get involved with something. And I hope to see you guys uh, either subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. We're social media. We're taking and we're enriching lives from all around the world. So students, friends, family, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. I'll see you next week. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. I'll see you.